Greetings! It is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my discussion on the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons, 5th Ed D&D. So, when we last left off, we were talking about random encounters. Today, we're going to start by talking about making your own random encounter chart. A random encounter chart should be incredibly straightforward. It's going to be a list of various type of encounters that you're going to determine that your PCs could possibly face, some kind of chance of encountering these, there, and then just arrange them in whatever order you want to. Simple as that. These could be anything from encountering a single monster or a single NPC, a group of monsters or a group of NPCs, coming across some kind of event, or making some kind of discovery. All of these are possible encounters that you can put together for your random encounter chart, for your table. Now, the most important thing you're going to determine about this is the location you're determining this table for. This could be a dungeon, a wilderness, something else. Whenever you've figured out what kind of location you're putting your encounters into, you've taken the first step. Now, the book does in the back one of the appendices, the DMG, it does provide a list of monsters by terrain which can help you out when determining a number of monsters you might possibly want to add into your table. It is important to note, though, you just don't want to put monsters. You should put some non-monstrous possible encounters into your table. Things like NPCs or those events or those discoveries that I talked about. For the monsters, when you are adding them in, think of it this way. When you see that monster, when you're choosing that monster, think why. Why is this monster not in its lair? Why would my PCs possibly encounter it as a random encounter? What kind of... What is this monster doing that they might encounter it? Is it hunting? Is it doing something else? This little bits of motivation will help add to what the encounter is. You could encounter the same monster, and two different motivations could be vastly different encounters. If you're encountering a bear with cubs, one that's hunting, one that's just defending the cubs, different encounters. It's also important that when you're doing this here, think about the location this encounter is going to take place in. Give little interesting details about the location you're building. So it's the location in your overall location of the wilderness or the dungeon and put interesting details into it to make it more of a unique encounter that your players are going to be running into. Now determining, uh, once you've gotten your chart, the number the basically random chance related to the table can be done in a number of ways. You can keep it very simple. Basically, if I have eight encounters on my chart, I roll a d8. I've arranged them one to eight. Whatever number I roll, bam, there's the encounter. You would also make it complex. Something like percentiles, where I have 100% and to each encounter I'm deciding, I assign it a percentile of that 100. I split them apart. I roll my percentile. I get it. It's much more complex. An easy sort of middle ground is rolling a d12 and a d8. That means you're going to have numbers from 2 to 20. Now, this means I could have 19 encounters on my chart. But the important thing here is the middle numbers are going to have a much higher percentile chance to roll than a 2 or a 20. So I could have my rare encounters and my more likely encounters in the middle, but it's a little simpler because then I just, I only have so many numbers that I'm assigning, and I'm just going to get one of them in the middle. Now a random encounter, it doesn't need to be level appropriate to your players, but be warned it is considered a really poor form to slaughter your players with a random encounter. So try not to make it too ridiculously difficult. You want your players to effectively not die to this. That's really like insult to injury. You're not even fighting something that's related to the storyline. Directly, you're fighting a random encounter and it's killing you. You're going to want to make it that it's more level appropriate to your characters. What this means is if you're taking a single monster, aim it to be one level lower than your players. If you're taking groups of monsters, only make it a difficulty challenge of easy, medium, or hard at most. Most to hard. And that's what you're basically going to determine the things your powers are going to be fighting with a random encounter. Now let's talk about NPCs, 
or at least their basics. So an NPC is any other character, being, individual, anything else in the world controlled by your DM, your dungeon master. They are also usually made by your dungeon master. These could be enemies, allies, the regular folk you might meet, even named monsters. They form the wide cast of NPCs. NPCs should be built in such a way that they provide a backdrop and add to the storyline of the campaign. Interesting characters set into an interesting world make it more interesting. If your characters are bland, your NPCs are bland, then of course it's going to reflect badly on your world. So the more interesting, the more in-depth you'd create them, the more it feels like you're interacting with a real world. And that's the point of well-crafted NPCs. Now the majority of the NPCs you're going to be crafting are going to be bit players in this massive story you're writing. They're not going to match with your players. Your players are the main characters in the story, but you will occasionally have some that will rise to a similar level to them. You're going to have to reflect the NPCs, basically how well you develop them on the role that they're going to be. You don't have to develop those little bit players as much as you have to, let's say, develop the important ruler of a town that your players are going to be interacting with constantly. Much more well developed than shopkeep A they might meet occasionally. Now, not every NPC is going to need combat statistics. Unless they're hostile to your players, or they have a good chance of getting hostile to your players, don't bother. In fact, the amount of information that you should provide for them should only reflect the amount of information that is needed. Basically, as much as you need to develop their personality for them to fit in with the role you're placing them within your world is how much you should actually develop them. Extra bits of information can be okay. It's not necessarily a terrible thing, but it's extra work you don't necessarily need to do that you could be concentrating on something else to bring your world more to life. It's excess information. Now, especially for more important NPCs, the top of the line ones that are basically the major ones in the storyline, there are effectively 10 elements that you want to look at. Each of these elements, when you define them, allows you to make a sentence defining a little bit more about your NPC. Basically, I should have to be able to come up with 10 little sentences which describe my NPC very well. As I said, each of these elements is major, and the elements as you're choosing them, again, will pertain to the type of NPC you're building. You don't necessarily need all the elements. This is when we're driving back into those smaller level NPCs, but it is a good staging ground for determining the various elements that your NPCs might need in order to define them as excellent characters. And of course, as I've saying, major ones, you should answer all 10. Now, this assumes also that these are humanoid NPCs. They can be adapted for more monstrous ones, which I will, again, talk about more next time. That's it for today, though. I finish talking about random encounters by talking about building your own random encounter tables. Choose a location. Choose some monsters, NPCs, kind of events, and various other interesting things for your players to encounter. Come up with interesting locations for them. Figure out some kind of rolling system that makes it a little random chance to determine which one it is. And then let your players add it. Let your players encounter them. Let your players experience them, but don't kill them off with it. Not on purpose. Accidents might happen, but don't aim for it ever. Always make it easy enough they shouldn't have to worry. I then began talking about NPCs. The fact is that you want a the non-player characters your players are going to be interacting with. What you as a dungeon master are controlling. Everybody, everything in the universe beyond your players, they might interact with. Every last one. I, of course, mentioned that you will build them, maybe not with combat in mind, but you will build them with a number of elements which help define them. Ten important elements. If you want a major NPC, then you're going to answer all ten of them. Someone else, you might not need all ten. It depends on the type of NPC you're building and the role they take. But in the next episode, I am going to talk about each of these ten elements, giving you a little bit of information as to what they are, and give you some information about basically what I am to define my NPCs. We'll then move into talking about 
monstrous NPCs. Basically named monsters is a good way of saying it. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It shows you for the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you could always check out my Patreon, linked in the description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.